All right, what's going on, everybody? So this is basically my reintroduction here uh, as far as uh, teaching goes. It's been a while since I've taught uh, what I do, tape reading. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, been in front of the camera like this uh, from a uh, sort of learning capacity, from an educator uh, sort of standpoint. St. Lucci has gone through... Uh, so many different sort of iterations. We've uh, we've gotten to a lot of new businesses. We've gotten out of a lot of businesses. We've learned so much about automated trading. Uh, you know, running different automated strategies at the same time. Uh, different types, different di new styles of trading that we've never really tested out. And now all of a sudden, I'm I'm kind of coming back to. Um, so a couple things we're going to do today. One of those things is to give you a little insight into my options writing strategy. Now, just real quickly, this is a strategy I've wanted to do for years, okay? And, you know, because of the natural progression of, let's say, maturity, maturity of a trader, okay? And what do I mean when I say that, right? Uh, how many of you guys here are 20 and under? How many of you guys here are uh, 25 and under? And then how many of you guys here are 30 and over, okay? You go through different iterations of yourself when you're at these stages in your life, right? So if you're 19, you're 20, you're 21, what kind of a trader do you think you are? Anybody want to throw that out there? And we got a couple 19-year-olds in there. Young here is a great one. What kind of a trader are you, Young? Uh, we got Alan here who is uh, 26. Sorry, Alan Rich. Um, uh, we got a couple other 20. Yeah, it's usually most of you guys here are in your mid-20s. So for you guys in your mid-20s who, let's say, have been trading for a certain period of time, remember, I started when I was around 22, 23, okay? Now, when you first start out, you're you're very immature, right? You yourself are immature. We got Barry here who's 51. What's up, man? What's up, man? The wisdom here, the wisdom here. Um, you know, so you have to go through stages in your trading career where you get over some of the mental, uh, some of the mental uh, uh, capacities uh, that kind of hold you back. So, for example, 21, you're too eager, you're too emotional, you're too everything. It's it's just an over overload of absolutely everything. 31, around where my age is, and let's say you have maybe five years of trading under your belt, 10 years of trading under your belt. Now you start to become a lot more methodical. You start to become, you start to let go of some of those uh, in, inhibitions that you had, uh, you know, when you were younger, things that held you back. Uh, let's say, I'll give you my biggest problem when I was 20, when I was starting out, uh, was all P&L. Everything was pure P&L. It was pure, hey, I need to make $500 today, otherwise I'm screwed here for the rest of the month. It was too short-term thinking. You're not thinking long-term. You're not thinking about any of this stuff. Um, and then when I was around 27, 28, and I knew what I could do, okay, I've had a day where, you know, I made a million bucks. I've had several days where I've made, you know, six-figure trades. That was normal. It was normal. And when you get to that point, and you start to see, uh, you know, those kind of percentage gains, you get used to that. You get used to that, and then you start putting expectations on yourself. How many of you guys are there where you start putting expectations on your trading, and you can't go back in trading? Uh, Chris Rock had a joke about, um, uh, uh, you know, marry, basically just being in a marriage, and they're saying married women can't go back in lifestyle, uh, you know, once you're living in one certain way or one certain capacity, you can't go back. You can't, you can't take a step back. You can't take three steps back to try to move forward, okay? So that's kind of where you are when you're five years in, six years in. You, there's a lot of expectation on what you should be able to do or what you could have been doing. So there's a lot of shoulda, woulda, couldas there as well. 31, once you're 10 years, 12 years into the game, or like my man Barry here, 51, you shed all this bullshit. You start to shed all of that stuff because this expectation just holds you back. All right, Young is saying I'm working on on getting rid of expectations here. Oliver, same thing, and a bunch of you other uh, a bunch of other guys here are saying the same thing. So you start shedding all that expectation. You start finally realizing, like, hey, me expecting this. I'm shooting myself in the foot here. I got to get rid of this stuff. And you've done enough mental toiling for years through shitty trades, shitty emotions, shitty behaviors, whatever you want to call it, you start getting rid of it. You start getting rid of it. You feel free again. 
writing here start writing here basically found me at this place okay so back when I was running a, a fund in New York City and I was trading 500 lots of Priceline or I was trading uh, you know a thousand lot of, of, of Amazon weeklies um, I would always sit there and I would always watch all of the premium when some of my big moves started to happen I would watch all of it just evaporate and I'd just look at those strikes and I'd be like I'd sell that, I'd sell that, I'd sell that, I'd sell, I'd definitely freaking sell that and it just went on and on and on and on and I started to realize like if I'm good enough at timing a breakout in let's say a name like Tesla um, and I can see a, you know a large directional move happening if I write there instead and I come out here out of the money and I start writing all these strikes and as this thing is moving I start getting closer and closer and closer I can actually scrape more premium than I would if I was actually long the calls now what is the problem with that strategy in and of itself it requires a lot of margin okay but we're gonna talk about that alright so that's the number one thing that we're gonna do today here talk about my writing strategy and then number two here is take you through this new course okay and in this new course of course you're going to get the writing strategy I'm gonna give you a lot of details here on different size accounts too If you got a smaller account what are the things that you're gonna to have to deal with Obviously, you got to tone your expectations down and all that. If you've got a larger account, you can really do some damage. I'm going to show you an example of my account. I'm going to show you all kinds of good stuff here today. So this right here is the master course. What we're going to do is talk a little bit about the, the writing strategy. I'm going to take some Q&A after we're done here, and then I'm going to walk you through what's included in this master course. So basically, calling it a master course here because it's everything that I did before, the tape reading, uh, you know, the options explanations, how an option works, how you want to use it, if you're going to be long or short, uh, volatility discussions, and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to add in, we're going to add in trading psychology, we're going to add in flow trading, which is a new kind of component that we've, add, we've added from uh, Wall Street Jesus. Uh, and then we're also going to add in, again, uh, the options writing strategy. Not only that, we got a lot of bonuses as well. So I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. Okay, but for now, let's talk writing here. How many of you guys currently have a writing strategy? How many of you guys currently employ some some type of uh, uh, credit spread writing strategy, maybe some iron condors or things like that? How many of you guys are in this sort of game or in this sort of space already? Uh, and then go ahead and let me know how you kind of came up on it. Okay, so I'm going to show you a quick spreadsheet here of just some action here, uh, uh, basically. Uh, for uh, one of my accounts here for the last uh, I would say for the last couple of weeks I would say for the last couple of months here okay so uh, go ahead and let me pull that up throw out here what you guys uh, what you guys got going on here as far as the writing strategy uh, and then we'll co we'll come together here okay so uh, real quick here just so I can clean this up uh, these are basically just numbers here for every single week uh, just for about three weeks and then I'll show you guys actual trades in detail okay and if you notice here what is the first thing that you notice again I mean everybody's gonna look at here are the weeks and then here are your here is your P&L and this is assuming 10 contract lots to around 20 contract lots okay and uh, as I open these you'll see every single one of the strikes that we wrote okay so again this is just a couple of weeks here and you can look at the P&L we're averaging around 2,000 to 3,000 a month with this particular strategy and this is just on writing 10 contracts to 20 contracts that is it okay obviously the ability to scale here is very good and your losses here are always with this particular strategy they're going to be smaller here than your wins however however with writing with writing if you are not safe as far as uh, you know your risk and as far as let's say a name like a Tesla if you're on the wrong side of a Tesla if you wrote the wrong side of a Tesla let me give you a perfect example of how this would look let's take a look at a weekly I don't know let's take a look at a weekly 240 call uh, of Tesla here okay and you guys can see this example uh, um, uh, very clearly uh, let's look at this thing for the last 10 days here uh, here you go. If you're on the wrong side of this shit, you know, this is not a place that you want to be. 
Granted, you're not going to be selling these things naked, and if anybody doesn't know what that means, basically you you can uh, you know you can sell uh, an option contract here without hedging it, without buying another leg here uh, to hedge that strategy. Again, these are all specifics here. We'll talk in detail during the master course, but this is a great example. Most of the time, on a name like a Tesla, she's going to do nothing. She's going to do nothing for a long period of time. Your ranges might get a little bit bigger, but she ain't going nowhere, okay? Most of the time, you guys know it, I know it, we all know it. Most of the time, your names like Amazon and all this garbage here, none of this stuff is going to do shit, all right? It ain't going nowhere, okay? Now, how do you take advantage of that? You take advantage of it through writing options. You take advantage of it by selling premium to some other schmuck who believes these things are going to happen. Now, nine out of ten times... What's going to happen to that option that you sell? You're going to book all that, okay? You're going to book all that. All that premium is going to go into your bank account. What happens that 10th time? Anybody want to guess? What happens that 10th time, all right? That is what you have to hedge against, okay? That is what you have to hedge against. Barry is saying lose big. Everybody else here knows the deal. So anybody who has a solid writing strategy, they can lose everything and then some, because of one, uh, you know, poorly managed uh, uh, trade. Okay, so this is why the requirement of having stops, uh, the requirement of having spreads, uh, and the ability for you to be able to juggle, uh, you know, several positions at one time here, uh, you know, that's really ideal. So let me give you a picture of what I have going on right now. So I have an interactive brokers account here, and these are all the premiums and strikes that I have going on right now, and these are all basically for this week. So what I'll do, okay, what I'll do is I'll roll into every single week, maybe on a Thursday or Friday, and I'll write the shit out of something. I'll write the shit out of both sides of something, okay, something that I'm watching. Now, you're going to ask, where is the edge? Where is the edge? How do you know what to write? How do you know what to write? How do you know what side to be on, okay? And that is the key. This is where we bring everything together for you in this master course. You guys need to step up your game here, uh, you know, and become much, much more well-rounded traders. So what we're going to do is give you the tape. We're going to give you the flow trading. Uh, you know, we're going to give you, we're going to give you a lot more here, uh, especially the psychological aspects of all this. Uh, and once you combine all these, that is your edge. Let me give you a perfect example. Okay. And again, so I know you guys want to see all these uh, these examples here, uh, just so you can prove it here. So, how do you use flow trading to help you on which side to write, or to help you on which names to write? Well, check it out. This is uh, the Wall Street Jesus chat room. This is currently the chat room that we all hang out in uh, on a daily basis. If you take a look at flow on the casinos, what are you gonna see? You're going to see very, very bullish flow on the casinos. Look at this one. Last one, September 130s here for about $1.5 million. Now, where is wind trading right now? Anybody want to pull up that strike right now and tell me where the hell that thing is? Because this guy just got paid like crazy. Okay? You guys want to know? We'll, we'll check some other names. How about we check another casino? Let's take a look at a name like MGM. MGM, look at this. Half a mil on a September strike. 32. Look at this guy. 35 strike drops almost 2 million bucks. Okay? Now, I think it's safe to say here that flow in the casinos looks pretty bullish. Let's take a look at LVS here. Yesterday, we had, uh, you know, a couple stacks going on the 59 uh, weekly call here. This is a weekly call. And then even before that, we had some flow here for uh, these 57s. So again, I know, I know already just by looking at the tape, just by looking at the flow, just by looking at the market too, casinos are a good place to be in. So what am I going to do about it? I'm going to go ahead and pull up this chain, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to scrape the living shit out of every single one of these puts and every piece of premium that I can get. Why? Because I'm confident here in a move higher on win. I'm confident here there's enough buyers here. Market looks good. Doesn't look like we're going to crash here. This is a good bet to go out of the money and scrape the living shit out of all this premium here. If anybody wants to make a bet that win is going to go down within the next couple of weeks, I will sell you that bet. Okay? This is what I'm talking about, combining all these different things here uh, to create uh, this kind of environment. Um, 
to, to create this kind of environment where you can find the right names to trade uh, and you can find also the right directions to trade, okay? These are two big components to writing that you really need to understand, okay? Uh, I'll give you another perfect example. I'll give you another example, okay? Let's take a name like an apple, okay? Let's take a name like an apple that's been more or less in consolidation. These are great times to wrap both sides. These are great times to wrap both sides. And what do I mean by wrap both sides? I mean, do, do I mean make a freaking burrito? No. Do I do? I basically mean make a sandwich here. Make an OTM sandwich here. Okay. So you're basically going to sell 155s, 160s. You're going to go out a couple of weeks here, uh, and you're going to sell both sides. All right. Now, where you sell these things, and where you place your stop. This is obviously going to be very important in you being able to take that premium to the bank every single week or whatever your time period is. Okay, we got a lot of questions here. I get it. I get it. We're going to come back to these questions absolutely here by the close. Um, okay, let's give you uh, let's give you one more example here of uh, some other things that I have going on. This Tesla. Okay, this Tesla. Tesla obviously extremely bullish. Best part about Tesla. Okay, and again, we got a bunch of questions here coming in. Best part about Tesla is that once that volatility starts kicking up and once this thing starts making 10, 20 point moves, you get fat premium. You get a lot of fat premium. Okay, so once these things trade out in directional moves, I know what side to play. After these things are confirmed breakouts or whatever, I can come down here and sell the 300 puts. Take a look at this Tesla here out to uh, out three weeks. Okay, let's take a look at what the uh, 300 puts are trading. That's 40 points out of the money for two freaking weeks. Okay, let's see what they're trading. All right, 65 cents, 65 damn cents. That's what I'm gonna get for this thing. All right, that's that's to me. I look at that and I'm like, that's free money. Give me that. I want that. Give me 65 cents for however many contracts you want. Anybody wants to buy this strike? Go ahead. You can buy right from me, baby. You can buy right from me. Okay, so this is how you're going to put it all together, put all these directional moves together, put your tape together, understanding, you know, if we're in a bullish, bearish market or we're in a consolidating market. And again, these are, these are, this is all a process here that I'm going to give to you during uh, the master course. These are just great examples here. Now, another key thing is, and again, this is for the Cowboys, and I still have a little Cowboy side in me. Once you get a huge move up in Tesla, at some point, that premium on the call side is going to come out too. Okay, that premium on the call side is going to cut out too. Check out this junior, uh, this uh, June uh, weekly here. I went ahead and wrote this 350 here this morning. Take a look at this thing. Okay, and I use tape, purely tape here, to figure out that yeah, basically this is a good time here to cap out. Okay, so notice what happened. We we topped out. We had a big tank. We tried to retest that and then just cut it again. Every single rally, they went ahead and sold right into. Now look at the premium that came off on this. And again, this is my cowboy side. I like to, you know, I like to dabble here. I like to dabble on the dangerous side a little bit. So I went ahead and took this 350 call and started writing the crap out of it, 80, 90 cents, and then all the way down here. Any pullback, any pop I got, 50 cents, 60 cents, I went ahead and uh, and buried this thing. Um, we got a one question here I want to address here. Slay, Slay is asking for tape. Uh, does tape equal flow? Negative. What is tape? Okay, what is tape? Fidelity here, uh, you know, offers a level two connected with a, uh, you know, with a, with basically a time and sales. So you'll get your transactions over here. And again, this is something that we're going to discuss here uh, during the master course. Tape reading is about understanding buyers and sellers. It's about understanding where the transactions go off, how quickly they're going off, and where are they going off on the bid or are they going off on the offer. Is there any size on the bid? Is there any size on the offer? Are there big sellers that keep coming back and smashing this thing? You know, there's a lot of different things that go on, uh, you know, with tape here that you got to understand. So how I put it all together here is I use the flow to give me a gauge on sentiment. Once I understand sentiment, I know what side to write. Okay. If sentiment is choppy, I got to go on both sides, but I got to get the right entries for those. And again, these are these are these are processes here that I'm going to explain to you in detail. Okay. Now, if I know we're bullish, I know what side to write. I'm going to sit there on the put side all day, and if something has ran a little bit too much, then maybe I might hop on the call side. SPX broke out today, 
guess what I did? Immediately, I started selling some June. I started selling some weekly uh, SPX puts simply because it's free premium. It is free premium. I'll hop in something right away. And I'm just talking about shaving dimes. I'm talking about shaving dimes and shaving nickels. And all of a sudden, by the end of the week, provided you have a fat account with some nice margin here, you're talking about making 10 to 20 grand every single week, depending on what you do, depending on how aggressive you want to be. Uh, if you want to be, uh, you know, if you have a $10,000 account and you have a little bit of margin, you're able to maybe make two to three trades every single week. You're talking about $500 consistently every single week, okay? If you watch your risk, if you watch your risk, okay? So that's the, obviously a big component here to this strategy. Uh, okay, so I see we have a ton of questions here coming out uh, for uh, uh, the writing strategy. Again, I'm going to get to those uh, at the end of this. Now let me take you through uh, the master course here, okay? Um, so again, it's, it's been a while since I've done this. It's, it's been a long time. I think the last time I did this, uh, and Charlie, you're around here. When was the last time I did this, man? I, I, think, it was the, I think it was probably the loft days. I was in New York City. Um, I would, I would, I would, I would do a class after making or losing $100,000 every single day, right? Like that's how crazy those times were. So I would be trading aggressively during the day and then I would go ahead and teach class at night. And then I would go get wasted at some local bar and wake the hell up the next morning and do the same shit again. Like that was, that was, that was the last time that I started to do that. Now, in that time, I've moved back to Boston been closer to my daughter, kind of calmed down a lot, uh, you know, and, and, and started looking at the market on how it could just pay me here uh, and how I could do sort of how I could get less attached to the daily ticks of the market. OK, how many of you guys are too attached, entirely too attached uh, uh, to the market? Everything that happens, every tick that happens, every buy, every sell, you're attached to it. OK. I wanted to get rid of some of that attachment. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to take myself out of that attachment uh, and enjoy some of the other things that life has to offer. Unfortunately, it takes the separation for you to get there, right? For you to get there mentally. So now that I'm there, I this strategy just kind of finally just came back in my lap. It was like, you know what? I had that idea. And I never did it because I was a cocky mofo and, you know, it was too slow for me. And now it's the perfect strategy for me. Why? Because I don't have to look at every single tick. I don't have to worry about every single tick, okay? Uh, as long as I have my risk there, as long as I have my system in place. Isaac, you have a question here. And again, about the risk here, we're going to we're gonna take that uh, after I go through the course. So that's why I'm kind of coming back to the game here. I have a new strategy, and it's just really – it. And, and what it's done for me has allowed me to pursue a lot of the other things that I've wanted to in life without being so attached to the market all the time. And let me give you the main reason why that happens. Let me give you the main reason why that happens. Even if I'm wrong on the right, okay? Let's take a look at this Tesla. Even if I'm wrong, okay, and Tesla is still strong, and Tesla, let's say, doesn't turn, okay? Even if I'm wrong, all Tesla has to do is not go up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so either side that I'm at, as long as I'm far away and as long as I'm far out of the money and as long as I have a close expiration, I, it's very forgiving. It is very forgiving. I don't have to be exactly right on the timing. How many of you guys trade options here? How many of you guys are long options only? How many of you guys know damn well timing is motherfucking everything? It is everything that you choose to do. It'll give you everything, and it'll take everything away. If you do not have the right timing when you are going long option, and if you're too stubborn to take that profit off the table immediately or sell when you need to, what happens to you? Okay? Now, I went ahead and bought that back for myself. You know what I mean? So I still got to mess around with the timing a little bit. Yeah, sure. But now I can be super forgiving. I can go two weeks out and sell one of you schmucks a 60 cent uh, put option for a 300 put on Tesla. Let's say this thing pulls back five points or whatever. I know this thing ain't going to crash. Okay, for the most part here within the next couple of weeks. So I can take that bet. And I will take that bet all day. I will sell one of you schmucks that option today for 60 cents. I don't give a shit because that to me is free money. Okay, and that's how I look at it. So if I can make 60 cents with barely, with not that much risk, 
I'm going to do that all day instead of trying to time exactly when Tesla is going to come down five or ten points. All right? I'd rather play the give me my 60 cents trade than the hey, when am I going to get the possibility of doubling my option on an option that is most likely going to expire worthless in about two freaking days. I'd rather take that bet at this point in my life. Maybe you guys are there as well. If so, follow me. So these are the things that you are going to learn here. And again, it's that edge. It's that edge. Everybody's looking for that edge. Um, and edge is hard to find. Edge, edge has to be refound. Edge has to be, maybe you had it one point. Maybe you had it at one point. Maybe I had, uh, you know, the best timing in the market. Maybe I had the best options timing in the market. Maybe I don't give a shit anymore. Okay. What is that edge that you need? to be able to produce the amount of dollars that you need to, to be able to produce and get what you need out of the market and move on, okay? And in reality, for me, it's edge in combining everything, combining all these tools here together. One of the most powerful tools that we have found is the flow trading. Um, Tesla alone, guys, was part, of the, uh, was, was part of the flow. I think there was a $400 call buyer uh, for September, uh, look at all these 350s that came out. These are all weeklies. Uh, I think there was, uh, yeah, look at this guy. September 440. This guy bought at 308, and this was April. This was April 28th. Look at this guy, okay? So this was April 28th. This was way back here, all right? And this guy's in a September option. And you could tell. You could tell Tesla was different. Tesla was different. It was just chilling around 300 bucks. It wasn't selling off like it used to, all right? And then all of a sudden, look at this thing. It's at 340. You're talking about $400. This, to me, this thing is not even done yet. This shit is not even done yet. Shorts are going to get murdered on this one. Now, can I still come in and sell a call and make money? you damn right I can. you damn right I can. Okay? Can I still come out here and sell puts far out of the money and, to me, make free money? Damn right. Absolutely. Okay? So that's what I'm out here doing. Okay. However, I needed to combine a lot of these things to do it. Number one, I'm at a different place mentally. This is something that we're going to throw in in the master course. How do you get to these places? What are these places that you're trying to get to? Tape reading, has it evolved over the years? Absolutely not. Tape reading is exactly what it was since it started, since they were spewing the paper out of the ticker tape from the 1950s. It is looking at but is look at a bid and ask. It is looking at supply and demand. Who's stronger right now? Who's going to win right now, buyers or sellers? That's all tape is, okay? And you can use the momentum in tape over a, a, a selected period of days to figure out if stuff's going to continue. And if you look at the same names over and over and over again, you start to realize different trends, different things that are happening. I'll give you a biggest one was the wind breakout from 90 bucks or 100 bucks. This was like last year. So this thing couldn't do shit over 100 bucks uh, for a long time. Look at this. Look at this. Nothing. Nothing. And then all of a sudden, something changed. Something changed. I would watch the tape every single day on this thing. And every single one of the casinos, there was a there was a phantom bid every pullback. Somebody was sitting there just, just buying. Just give me stock. Give me stock. Give me stock. Give me stock. And this thing changed completely. Until that sentiment changes, this is a bullish stock. To me, any pullback, if you guys want puts out here, I will sell them all to you until that sentiment changes. Okay? So that's what tape is. All right? And you'll learn that in the master course uh, as well. Flow trading, okay, and again, this is the acquisition here of Wall Street Jesus. This is the stuff that we do. We, we watch a lot of the activity here in the option space. Who's making the big bets out here? What kind of market are we in? Um, you know, is it time to go ahead and buy some fixed protection? All that kind of stuff. Uh, adding in the flow trading to your tape reading uh, and figuring out the best direction to play, figuring out the best uh, read sort of on sentiment. Um, and again, uh, you know, you will get the option strategy uh, as well. You'll get the basics too. We have a lot of different packages here that are coming along with this. Uh, so through all this, you're going to get 12 live classes. Uh, you're going to get three nights per week. They might go two hours, three hours. You know, there's a lot of material here that we got to pack in uh, to these sessions. But not only that, you're going to get live trading sessions. So now you're going to see me just like here. Uh, you'll see my screens. You'll see what I'm doing. Uh, we got some guest interview series, uh, you know, with a lot of traders that I've found over the years uh, to be very valuable to even my own trading. And these are all traders that have found their niche. You know what I'm saying? So we talk a lot about finding the right strategy for you. You know, sure, you might take my option strategy. 
But the question is, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to adapt it to your trading style? Are you going to adapt it to something that you can manage? Are you going to completely screw it up because you're too, you know, your mind's in a completely different place? You can't understand something like this. You can't understand uh, that it may be a little bit slower than what you're doing right now. Are you able to adapt mentally to take a strategy and make it work for you? So what does that mean? How do I, well, you know, what does it mean by finding my own strategy? I will help you get there as well. Okay, uh, you'll get the introduction to options for free. Uh, you'll also get Wise Guys Revealed. This is a course on trading flow. So whether you guys want to trade intraday, some of you guys are equity traders, some of you guys are options traders. Uh, basically, how to take uh, the action here that is happening, uh, you know, in as far as the uh, the flow, um, as far as options bets being taken in the market. You take a look at this Google one. Look at this 950 in the money August. What do you do with this guy? You know, this is a seven million dollar bet. It's probably tied to stock. What is this guy doing? What's this guy up to? Is it fun? You know, should I? I follow this guy what am I you know what am I really doing um, you know how do you take a look at these and make the right trades here depending on how long the expiration is uh, and all that kind of stuff okay so we're gonna teach you well, actually we're gonna throw in uh, the wise guy reveals course and that is a 499 I think we sell that right now for 499 and you get a one free month of the steam room so again this is all of us just chilling in the steam room a lot of good traders in here a lot of different traders a lot of different strategies too uh, and again, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's, that's more or less it. Let's get to these questions here. Let's get to, let's get to a couple of these questions, uh, and then we'll pull back, um, and discuss a little bit more on the course here. Uh, all right, so, uh, what do we got here? Jim here, uh, with the, wow, there's a lot of questions here. All right, uh, guys, feel free to ask your questions again if I, if I may have missed them, absolutely. Uh, so we'll take some writing questions here right now. Uh, let's see, let's see, uh, let's see, Young is saying, uh, Oliver here, Oliver here is saying, swing riding can be crazy at times, because one day that option can skyrocket in the wrong direction, and you're done, or you give all your money back, guess that's what spreads are for, absolutely, so, I mean, if you look at my current trades right now, and these are just trades for the week, uh, if we take a look at this NVIDIA, right, so I went ahead and sold, uh, I sold a, a, a call spread here on NVIDIA, and these are just 10, 10 contracts here, and my average price here, you can see, was about 14 cents. So I'm, I'm just selling premium as 14 cents, 20 cents, up to about a dollar uh, for however many that I can get, right? So your spread here is going to protect you, okay? So to give you a quick give you a quick crash course here in risk when it comes to spreads or vertical spreads, you're going to take the amount of contracts you have, Obviously, multiply that by the exposure you have uh, with the options. Every options contract represents 100 shares. So you got your 10 contracts with 100. So that's 1,000 shares, okay? Now you got 1,000 shares at a spread of 2.5, okay? So 2.5 spread times 1,000, that's 2,500 bucks, okay? 2,500 bucks, that's your max loss on this, okay? Now, it sounds kind of crazy. It sounds kind of crazy because your max gain on this thing is going to be 200 bucks. It's going to be a measly 200 bucks. That's what you're going to make on this thing. You're going to risk, though, $2,500. Now, anybody who looks at this, okay, and again, there's a reason why only institutions do this, <laughs> because the rest of you guys will look at this and be like, uh, hell fucking no, right? Most, most institutions will sit there on the offer side, and they'll sell options to us schmucks all day long, okay? Because why? I would say with my current record right now, it's like 70 to 80% of the time, those options are going to nothing. It just depends on time. It depends on the volatility involved. And again, you're talking about institutions. So these guys have automated strategies on hedging. They'll go, they'll go in the market. They'll buy stock. They'll short stock. They'll sell other strikes around it. They'll even go along some strikes. They will clearly, they will get down to almost delta neutral, even if they're out there selling hundreds of contracts out there to you and I, okay? Now, you and I will sit there, sell this spread, and make 200 bucks on risk of $2,500. Now, $2,500, for me, that's too much. I can't afford to lose. If my gain is going to be 200 I can't afford to lose the 2500 So what do you do? What do you do? Okay, you create a stop loss here. You want to you want a max kind of situation where you're going to sit in this option. You don't want Nvidia going to freaking 155 on you. If this stock right now, let's see, let's see what the hell is Nvidia doing right now? 
now. I don't even know what this thing is doing. And this is the beauty. I'm so unattached from the I don't even I don't give a shit what Nvidia is doing. And I know I can make my two hundred dollars. <laughs> That's the only thing I give a damn about. Okay, let's go ahead and pull up this uh, this trade back up. Okay, so again, we sold the one fifty by one fifty two and a half. Why did we do that? Well, this thing was going on such a run. I knew this premium was going to be heavy here. That's still out of the money, right? So I was still able to get. And by the way, this was a market order. I think I could have gotten like a quarter or thirty cents, but I still got a quarter or thirty cents for a weekly option. Six points or seven points out of the money when all of a sudden I saw this thing going completely flat. So am I going to take that trade? Hell yes, I'll take that trade. All right, I'll sell it all. Sell me 155. Sell me all this stuff. Now, if I start to feel the market start to move higher, what do I want to do? I want to get on the put side as well, and I want to start hedging out of this risk. If I get stopped out, who gives a shit? I get stopped out. Now I'm on the other side of the trade. I know what's happening, and now I can start writing the correct side, the correct direction. Sometimes I need to be on both sides as well. Okay, so that's a perfect example. Oliver, does that answer your question there on the NVIDIA? Absolutely. That's what spreads are for. However, sometimes your spreads are going to be so damn wide. Look at this one. Look at this one, right? So I got an Amazon here, 20-point spread, right? 20-point spread. Let's say you've got 10 contracts of this shit. 10 contracts of this on a 20-point spread, that's a $20,000 max loss. I ain't trying to lose 20, 20 Gs and my max gain here is, is 400 bucks, whatever the hell it is. That ain't happening. You know what I mean? So there's, again, there's a game that you have to play as far as risk, as far as stops. Um, you know, so, so that's part of the strategy building that you're going to need to do as well. Half the time, I don't even need stops for some of this stuff because it's just way the hell out of the money. But who knows? On a Friday... Let me give you guys a lovely story. I tried to do this on a Friday once with Priceline with way too many contracts. I think I had 200 contracts short, okay? And I was close. I was, cl I was maybe like 10 points away. Priceline rips like 25 points in maybe 10 minutes. And I knew, I knew it was either a market maker or somebody out there that wanted to squeeze me. Somebody out there knew I had those contracts. And somebody out there wanted to squeeze the living shit out of me. I sold those contracts for maybe a buck or two bucks. They went to $26. $26, and guess where they ended up? They ended up at fucking zero. Zero. I was up maybe 20 grand on that trade. I, I ended up losing $65,000. Thank God. Thank God it was I sold it six bucks on the way up. I couldn't take it. And the thing went to $26. The option went to $26 and then went to zero. All right? Crazy shit happens out here. <laughs> Crazy shit happens out here. All right, what other questions do we have? Does tape equal flow? Absolutely not. I answered that question. Stephen here is saying, what's the margin requirement? What's the margin requirement for selling a near the money spy call or a put for a PMA? Okay? Great question. Great question. And again, this is going to vary here with your broker. Depends on how your broker does it. PMAs generally here is what's called portfolio margin. This means that if you have a weighted portfolio, okay, if you have a sort of the more delta neutral your portfolio becomes, the more margin you're going to get. Whereas with regulation T, reg T is what they call it, you're just going to get your basic two to one uh, overnight and four to one for your day trading. Okay. So let's take a look at the SPY here. Uh, so he wants to know how much a SPY or a put uh, would go for, let's say, if you sell it naked, okay? Assuming you sell 10 contracts naked, all right? Your broker wants you to at least have 25% of that of the total value. And, and you know, God willing, they're, they're allowing you to just do 25%. They should probably allow you to do a lot more than that. All right, so let's say you got 10 strikes and you sold, you know, your 243 here. Okay, so your 10 contracts, remember, that's 1,000 shares. 1,000 shares times 243, that's 243 grand, okay? Your broker wants to make sure you got at least 25% of that. If you're going to sell it straight out naked, okay? So what's 25% of a quarter mil? That's, uh, how the hell do I not know this off the top of my head? What is that, 75? That's 75? That's 75? Why do I feel like I'm not right on this? 65? Whatever. Somewhere around 50 to 75 you guys know what the hell it is. 60, I think it's 62 and a half. 62 and a half, that's how much cash you need to have to sell a measly 10 contracts, okay? A measly 10 contracts of SPY, you need 60 Gs in your account, okay? And options approval. By the way, you need options approval to be able to do this. And that's another question here by Steven or Jim here. You have to be level three approved, approved to write uncovered calls and puts. So you gotta be level two, I think will get you the spreads. 
Uh, level three, you know, you can start to do, you can start messing around with some of the naked stuff out there, and then level four, hey baby, you can do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> right? You got to work up to that. Um, all right, so quick details here on the master course, and again, I will go ahead and uh, answer the rest of your questions. I know we got a lot more. Uh, Thirty-three percent discount here up until Monday night. Okay, Monday night is actually when the course starts. That might actually change depending on my weekend plans. But 33% discount up until Monday night. So that takes your $3,000 course down to two grand. Okay? So that takes your $3,000 course down to two grand. So you're already getting $1,000 off if you sign up by Monday. Okay? All right? So that's number one. Um, uh, let's see. If you want to break it into two payments, too, we can do that as well. Uh, and I think uh, you know you you'll catch it when you uh, when you when you when you do the sign up. Uh, if you're a former student, including Wise Guy Reveals, uh, drop a comment in the chat or hit us up. Uh, you know, Lucci at SaintLucci.com, uh, anywhere you guys know how to find us. Uh, and we've got even a further discount for you as well. Okay, so you guys might be asking number one, like two grand. That seems like a lot of money. Number one, like we sold our original tape reading course for I don't know maybe around fifteen hundred, the same amount of value. Um, I'll say I'll say one thing. Number one, we're already knocking off the the uh, the thousand bucks. Number two, how much money have you have you guys lost trading? Like, you know, and Options Wire here. By the way, Options Wire here is a guy we just uh, we just did a uh, an interview with. I'm sure you guys have seen on Twitter. Options Wire. How how much money have you? How much money would you say you lost before you know you're you're where you are right now? How how much money did you pay the market? Uh, for, you know, let's say the learning experience or whatever. How much money have you guys, you know, some of you guys too are currently down right now. Some of you guys are currently down right now and you're trying to work it out. JW here is saying uh, 180K, right? So you're going ahead and, and, and I'll throw my numbers out there. Before I started making money in 2008 or 2009, uh, I was down in my prop account like 50, 50, like 52, something like that, you know, and then I went on a nice run and then immediately, you know, two, three months, I was out of it, okay? But again, a lot of that had to do with the mentality. A lot of that had to do with understanding a lot of different things. Uh, Young here is saying lost 3K. We got a couple of guys here around 10 to 20 grand. You guys have lost a good amount of cash. And not to mention the time, okay? And how much is your time worth? Options where I said around 200K. Uh, Larry here saying around 40K in my first couple of years. Um, and your time. What's your time worth? What's your time worth? If you were doing this for a whole year, okay, if you were doing this for a whole year and let's say you were down your 40K, you're also down the opportunity cost of you going out and get a shitty ass job, right? Now, shitty ass job will pay you what? Uh, depending on what your skills are. I mean, if it's according to this bunch over here, you know, your skills ain't much. So we're talking about what? 45,000 a year, right? So you're also foregoing a $45,000 a year salary and you also lost 40,000, okay? So if you look at it this way here, I'm doing you a favor. I am doing you a favor, okay, by feeding all this stuff, force feeding all this stuff to you and giving you this edge that you so desperately need, that we all so desperately need. And oftentimes it takes us a while to find it, find it again, and keep it, okay? It's very difficult to do these things. You need help, okay? There's a lot of things that we have going on right now, and when we combine them all together, you know, there's a lot of edge that we that you are going to have and a lot of mental edge as well that you are going to have. All right. So uh, take advantage of that discount. Remember, you got until Monday uh, to take advantage of the 33 percent discount. Remember, we also do uh, the two payments as well. Uh, and I think actually I have some links here for you. So if you guys want the two payments, uh, I have some links here for you. You go ahead and use this link, which I will send to you right now. And the one link I will send to you in a bit. Let's take some more questions here. Uh, let's see, Michael. Uh, Matthias here saying, option sweeps aside. When you look at the level two, what's more important to you? Big orders on the bid or ass side? Notice a lot of guys look at ass side. Um, you know, again, like, it's, it's, it's a science. It is a science. It's going to take some practice. Uh, it's going to take some practice understanding what that size actually means, okay? So let's say you have a name like a Tesla. Okay, let's say you got a name like a Tesla and you got a 10,000 share bid. Okay, that's a decent amount for a Tesla. It's a decent amount for a Tesla. Okay, anything from $10,000 to 10,000 shares to about 100,000 shares, it's something worth looking at. Okay, now 
Just because it's on the bid or the offer side doesn't mean shit. Look at it from the buying perspective. Look at it from behind, uh, you know, behind the veil here. What is this buyer intending to do? Let's say he gets that 10,000 shares filled. Does he come back with another 10,000? If he comes back with another 10,000, does he come back even more aggressive with it? Does he step it up? Does he put it higher? Does he put it at three, 340 and a half? Does he say, oh, shit, I can't get a fill. Let me put it at 341. Is he aggressive? All right. Is your seller aggressive? Is your buyer aggressive? If he is, you got to trade. If there's nothing to see, you got consolidation and you got nothing. You got there's no edge here in that particular tape. You are trying to find out who's working that tape. And once you figure that out, you got to trade. If you don't, you got nothing here. You got nothing but guesses and maybes. All right. Or your beloved chart patterns what's the latest out there options wire what is it called squid ink what is it the uh the top squid ink pattern what is it what, 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 what's the latest pattern you guys are messing around with these days all that stuff is bullshit okay um let's see what do we got uh, michael here is saying how many strikes away from the short side uh do you do you hedge typically michael it depends on what kind of um you know, it depends on what kind of uh, premium I want to be able to take in. So if you look at, I don't know, what do I got? If you notice, I, I got the call side here of this Amazon. And people, and oh, I think I was telling people in the chat, they were like, dude, what are you doing selling calls on this Amazon? I'm like, bro, look at this shit. It's, it's dead. It's dead again. Now, this market just broke out. Amazon couldn't really go anywhere. Is it possible that Amazon just gaps up and goes 20 points? Absolutely. If so... I got the put side. I got the put side, and I start moving up. I'll get stopped out on the call side, and the game still goes on. I'll make back my losses like this, and we have a whole new trade. In fact, I want this thing to move up 30 points. I want this thing to move up 40 points. Then I get free money here on the put side, selling you chumps a bunch of lot of puts that you ain't going to make money on. Okay? So that's my game. Uh, so to answer your question, Michael, uh, you know, how far are the spreads? Um, you know, I determine, and again, because I have a good account here with enough margin, you know, I'm able to go 10 points out. I'm able to go 20 points out with a smaller account. Let's say a $25,000 cash account, you know, you, you, you'll still be able to do it, but it's going to, it's going to, it's going to really cut down your margin that you can, a that you can be able to play for the next trade and the next trade. So that's another thing that we'll talk about here as well. You know, what kind of, you know, what kind of spreads you want to stick around because of the type of account you are. I'll even write shit on Microsoft, all right? I was even writing, I'll, I'll write in the money stuff on Microsoft because I like the move. So I started writing uh, puts that were in the money because I just love the flow. The flow on Microsoft has been amazing, has been absolutely amazing. But in reality, Microsoft is a freaking, you know, these options are penny stocks. Look at, look at, look at this, right? Look at, the, look, at these, look at these options. There, there's no premium on this. So you got to sell a thousand contracts just to make any money anyway, okay? So I'll go in the money. If I like a name like a Microsoft, I'll go in the money, and I'll take a nice 50-cent premium. I'll take something, you know, I'll take it something far out there. Maybe I'll go out a month or two months, right, because I like the swing trade. I love the flow in this thing. I love the fact that techs are strong or whatever, and I'll go two months out, play something in the money, and I'll get a dollar. I'll get a dollar for this shit. You know what I mean? That's risk. I will gladly take. And on top of that, I don't have to watch Microsoft like a dickhead every day, which I do not want to do, okay? Number one, I don't want to look like a dickhead, and I don't want to feel like a dickhead every day, okay? You know what I'm saying? Now, if you want to play Microsoft on the long side, and you really wanted to make money, and you're sitting there playing weeklies, are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? You got to be you got to be so on point to make money on a Microsoft for the week. Half the time, 90% of the days are bullshit, complete bullshit. And then maybe you get a 5% day. It's the same thing with this LBS. Look at this piece of shit. And then all of a sudden there's a 5% day today. Look at this. Come on. You you're telling me you're going to make money on this by by hopping and trying to time this exactly? No, unless you are me, which you are not. Okay? So, what do you got to do? Come join me. Number one, okay. Uh, options wire is saying, how can I make money in options with no risk? Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, if we were, if we had, okay. So, all right. To answer this question, in reality, right? A million bucks will get you unlimited leverage, provided you're at a prop broker or some kind of prime broker that just loves you. You like, they gotta love you. It's more like two and a half million or like five million. If you got five million bucks. 
your broker will let you pee on his 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 son, R. Kelly style, and then you know what I mean. You can do whatever the hell you want to. Okay. Now, if you have that kind of leverage, if you have that kind of margin, you know there's ways to make every single trade delta neutral. There's ways to hedge out of every single piece of risk that you find yourself in. Now, is it going to get more complicated? Absolutely. Do I know how to do all that shit? Hell no. I would need a risk manager. I would need somebody who is just you know, that's what they do. That's what they do for their whole day. They just figure out how to get to Delta Neutral. So to answer Options Wire's question, you need five million bucks and a broker who's going to let you piss on his son. That's what you need. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Barry is saying, can't the, uh, can't the HFT guys just hide or fake the orders on the level two? I get this question all the time. I get this shit all the time. So, you know, people are like, level two and tape is useless. Um... Because all of it is fake, okay? And the biggest, the biggest point of this argument, I think it hit in like 2008 or 2009, like 2007 when regulation NMS came out and the computers just started running everything. That's when you really started to fake. That's when you really started to see the fake book. The fake book, books were – the NICE open book in particular. That was just the fakest thing that I've ever seen. Um, and then slowly, slowly but surely, it's gotten much better. It's gotten back to where it was even before 2007. Um, you know, and, and again, all it took was uh, sending Sorrell to jail and, uh, you know, a couple other brown guys to jail and, uh, you know, and we're kind of back to business as usual. Now, is the shit on the book fake? Are you going to run into a $100,000 uh, uh, bid that's fake? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, can it be fake and you still understand what to do with that? If you have a fake buyer here and let's say he's got 100,000 shares, what is he trying to do? What's he trying to do? Right? What's he trying to do? He's trying to get you to. He's trying to get your dumbass to cross this spread and pay up here at 27, or pay up at what? At a dark pool. He's going to try to get you to pay up in a dark pool. And what are you going to do? You're going to take the bait because you're an idiot, and you're going to take what? 62.15 and 62.20. Right? They're going to fill you in a dark pool. That was him. He's going to go ahead and pull his order once he's got enough of you suckers in, which obviously he's going to get plenty, judging by the the the, the questions here that I'm getting. And they're going to pull this bid, and this thing's going to dump. Maybe it'll dump 20 cents. Maybe it'll dump 30 cents. Who gives a shit? Maybe it'll dump 10 cents. All this guy cares is that he made his 10 cents. Okay? That's all this guy gives a shit about. All right? So there's plenty of that action going on. However, okay, in the larger course of things, in the bigger picture of things, with the, uh, the flow that we see, million-dollar bets in casinos, uh, maybe huge money buying in, uh, in banks, techs, whatever the hell it is, these guys got to come out and buy millions of shares. How are they going to do that? Huh? How's a mutual fund out there that now needs to reallocate to a fucking Amazon because it's a thousand dollar stock and it's going to have the price line trajectory and the shit's going to go to eighteen hundred dollars, eighteen hundred bucks? How's a mutual fund now going to buy uh, what? A mutual fund's got to buy what? Two hundred thousand shares of this thing? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? They got to come here. They have to come here. This is the only place they have to come. Yes, there's going to be dark pools. Yes, they're going to be able to get a fill here. Yes, they're going to have automated traders actually executing that position. Yes, absolutely, all that. However, the footprints are right here. They don't go anywhere else. They're right here. They're all right here. Okay? That's what tape and that's what level two is. You can find that shit. You got to trade. Other than that, the rest of this is nonsense. And the rest of this, guess what? You can still make money on selling bets to a bunch of suckers like yourselves. Uh, what else we got? Um, does that make sense too, by the way? Uh, let's see. Uh, Val is saying, saying, Lucci, what do you use to trade options quickly? I'm um, learning on TOS, and TOS is very slow. Every single one of these brokers are shitty, are, are extremely shitty. Um, uh, Barry is saying here, meaning time and sales. Yeah, so a level two and a time and sales connection. Uh, you know, if you're looking for some, I mean, you know, some of your brokers here will, will split it up for you so you get an actual time and sales. I used to read this shit, all right? So instead of reading books, I was sitting here reading tape, right? So I would be like, yo, what happened at, at X, Y, and Z time for that half an hour? Something crazy happened. I want to go ahead and watch that stuff, all right? So that's what I go ahead and take a look at. I go ahead and pull back, uh, you know, between X, Y, and Z time and take a look at this tape, why? Right? Just to study it, just to figure out what's going on, okay? Um, uh, what did I hit you? So, Barry, does that answer your question, too? Uh, uh, we had a question on TOS. TOS, dude, 
they all suck. All these brokers suck. IB sucks. Fidelity sucks. All this shit sucks. All right. It's all going to be slow. I only like I like Fidelity for data. So I, I don't trade with Fidelity, but I like to I like the data because it's clean, man. Like it's clean. There's no bells and whistles. There's no you know what I mean? I mean, I can put all that stuff on there, but all of all of this shit is clean. It's nice and clean. It doesn't look crazy. It doesn't look jumbled. TOS to me, it's like, it's a fidget spinner for freak's sake, man. It's a fidget spinner all over the damn screen. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what I'm looking at in there. So I'm not, you know what I mean? I need simple. I need simple. Simple. Now at this point, guys, you know what? People are going to start trading on this shit. None of us are going to want to sit in front of four screens or six screens in another five years. All right? If you do that shit, you're going to go crazy. You're literally going to go crazy. So all of us are looking for solutions. I think this whole trading platform game is going to change as well. I also want to be ahead of that. That's also another reason why you got to be part of the crew because we are always we're we're always on the next thing. We're always on the next thing. We're always trying to figure out a better solution to the shit that we're doing. Okay? Val is saying, yeah, TOS is very complicated. Um, you know, IB is very complicated, too. IB is extremely complicated. However, there's a lot of other cool order types that they have, you know, that Fidelity doesn't. You know, so there, there's going to be little benefits here and there, but most part, they all suck, bro. They all suck. And it's not the platform's fault if you lose money. All right? Remember that, please. <laughs> uh, Slay is saying, have to look at level two from our uh, side or from the other side. Uh, you might have to ask that question again there. Um, Alan Rich is saying, I felt that Wise Guys Revealed didn't say much about tape reading. Does the master course go further in depth about it? Dude, Wise Guys Revealed is not about tape reading. <laughs> that whole course it has nothing to do with tape reading. All right? This whole course here uh, about, uh, sorry, Wise Guys Revealed, this is modern flow trading. Jesus and I both did this together. So we, uh, we went ahead and recorded a lot of videos here to explain, uh, you know, how to use the flow. Um, and this has nothing to do with tape reading. <laughs> Nothing, absolutely nothing to do with tapering. All it is uh, is being able to look at the types of flow that hits the tape. Uh, and when I say tape here, I mean tape in the uh, tape in the room, uh, and then know what to do with it. Know whether to intraday trade with. What if? What does it mean if they go for a December? What does it mean if they short puts? What does it mean if they long puts? You know, just kind of a basic example here on how to trade this type of flow, whether you're trading, um, you know, equity or you're trading options. Okay. That's all Wise Guy revealed this. And by the way, you're good, you guys will get this free inside the master course. So you'll get even a, a further benefit to understand exactly how to trade these things, whether you're intraday trading or whatnot. Like this Visa guy right here that came off at the end of the day. Look at this guy, July 97 and a half. Now, I love Visa, okay? I love me some Visa. And this is a great sell put trade that you could just sit on here because it does nothing. And pullbacks here are pretty light. Any of these pullbacks I get, I'll sell some puts. Now I see a guy going out to 97 and a half. And look how much freaking time he bought. It, okay? And again, this is all this is me doing modern flow trading here for you. Um, and this is uh I don't know what happened here. Uh, 97 and a half for July. So that's a month, two months out, 97 and a half. Okay. So I'll go ahead and figure out what he paid for it, and I'll see, okay, you know, maybe I can get this on a dip, you know. And if you want to trade a long call here or if you want to short puts, that's how, that's modern flow trading. Tape reading is a completely different science. Tape reading will allow you to say, okay, okay, I see this 97 and a half guy here. I see that he's going for July. I see he dropped 200 Gs on this thing. I see this stock is trading around 95 and change. Where do I want my entry? Where do I want my entry? Okay. Where do I want my entry? Oliver, poor Oliver here. Hold on. I'm going to get to you in a second. Tape reading will help you with your entries. And entries and exits. Entries, I would say more so, uh, are extremely important. Exits, you can kind of start automating now. But entries, that feel, that, 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 that gut here, you know? Because, again, you don't want to just jump in these things. If you do, you want to be able to add. You want to be able to add to your size. Tape here will help you find that right entry. Where are the buyers and where are the sellers? Who's winning right now? That's what you want to know, okay? Uh, Van is saying, uh, is this being recorded? I think Charlie is also answering questions in here. Uh, let's take a couple more questions here. Alex is saying, after watching certain stocks for so many years, do you notice certain issues having distinct flow behaviors that when you see, you know it's an edge? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Um, you know what I love? You know what I love, too, that the, the flow uh, really helps with? Jesus will throw out, and it won't hit the t it won't hit the board. But Jesus will throw out these little weekly bets, these small little weekly bets, 
right? And you'll see like little snipers. You'll see little snipers come in and be like 50 thou or 100 thou on a wild ass weekly on a wild ass weekly call, right? And you'll be like, "Damn, what is this what is this guy doing here?" And sure enough, you'll see the big you'll see the buying right after it. And you'll be like, "Uh, okay." And then tomorrow you'll know, be some news, you know, the next day there'll be some news or whatever. I love seeing stuff like that. Um, you know, it's a great indicator for me on, um, you know, just playing with the same stocks over and over again. And that's all I do. I play with the same shit over and over again. Okay. I don't need to go. I don't need to go that far out. Um, Oliver here saying, will you ever go back on live feed in the chat room? Yo, bro, they want me out here. I get it. I get it. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Last question here. Isaac here. Could it be possible to contact with somebody of the uh, Today participants that speak Spanish? Um, maybe we can hook that up for you, man. Charlie, Charlie, see what you can do for this man. I mean, you know, I mean, we all speak a little bit of Spanish, <laughs> but not enough, not enough for you, my friend, not enough for you, my friend. So hopefully we can, uh, hopefully Charlie can help you out with that. Uh, again, guys, uh, check out the site. Uh, I will go ahead and drop a link here for you guys and run. You're, you're going to get your curriculum right here. And then not only are you getting the 12 uh, uh, live classes here, or sorry, yeah, the, the, uh, the live classes, two hours to three hours, you're getting my writing strategy broken down exactly for you, how it works, what, what is your intent, what you're trying to do, uh, and then we're going to have a lot of uh, uh, freebies here to throw in, one month free in the Steam Room, uh, you'll get the Wise Guys revealed as well, and the introduction to options. For anybody who doesn't understand too much about options, if you're coming in very basic right now, I assume that you're coming in with a good amount of knowledge here, on at least a basic amount of knowledge here uh, on the options here. Slay is saying any requirement of capital uh, so we can apply. My friend, you don't need to apply. We just need your two grand, my friend. We need your two grand, okay? As far as requirement of capital for your trading account, if you want to trade um, options as far as writing options, you need, you need 10. You need 10. I mean, please. And 10 is even light. 10 is light, but you need 10. Five you can do it with, but Slay, you're 26. So, you know what I mean? Or 29 or whatever the hell you are. You're 20. Oh, fine, fine, 29. It's too slow. If you're 5 thou, you, it's too slow, okay? And you're going to get frustrated. Trust me. You are going to get frustrated. Uh, Oliver saying, also, as part of the OG Lucci class and then bought the revised class, we'll hook you up, Oliver, man. You, you know we got you, man. You know we got you. Charlie, hit up Oliver, man. You know, he's got the, he's got the, he's got the, he's got the Lucci cosign, you know what I mean? Uh, all right, so again, all these things included here, uh, you'll get the single payment link. I already sent you guys the two payment link. Remember, you can take, uh, you can take the 2000 and pay uh, 1000 and then another 1000 uh, or the single payment. There's a different link here for the single payment, so let me go ahead and send this to you. Hopefully, guys, we see you soon. Take advantage of the promo here while it lasts. Again, only until Monday. It was great. It was great seeing you guys. Great seeing you guys. We'll see you soon.